Welcome to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in digital infrastructure. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today is Tatiana Smith. She is the Associate Director of GERNS. Tatiana, welcome. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Nice to be it's here. It's a beautiful day here in Cannes, France, on the French Riviera, and we are going to talk about Dern. So why don't you tell our viewers a little bit more about Derns and what they do? Uh, we are digital uh, innovators, let's say. We are engineering consultancy that works internationally, and we're leading the design development for data centers for our clients. Um, and we work in many countries across Europe, uh, South America and Asia, uh, making sure that design is most optimized, efficient, and everything is accounted for and it's um, cutting edge. Yeah, I mean, cutting edge design in data centers is so critical, especially with the amount of growth that we're seeing in the industry, wouldn't you say? Yes, absolutely, because it's so rapidly changing. Uh, technology for the IT, for the servers, come every six months to a yeah. year. All our clients want to make sure that they, their power is, um, power, IT power is up to date and maximized. So when we build uh, data centers and we design them, the infrastructure lifespan is much longer than IT uh, lifespan. Right. So you, we are not changing in, uh, engineering or um generators, cooling as fast as the IT load can change. So um, this year conference was very insightful and, and my understanding from the operators that they are looking to change the IT loads almost like annually this um, from now on. Some, some operators change IT load three to five years, but the infrastructure change 15 years onwards, yeah. like 15, 6, 30, depends on the, on the plant. So the main challenge for engineering is how to make infrastructure adaptable so the client can uh, maximize the IT load without um, changing the infrastructure much. So the, the challenge for engineers is making sure the um, system can be plug and played so the generators could be scaled, the cooling could be adjusted. So it's all about modular solutions these days. So And it's modular everything from transformer down. So every time the change comes, it's, it's really easy for the operators and developers to, to adapt yeah. to accommodate new technologies. Well, it sounds like you have your hands full uh, with yeah. all the changes and evolution in the design space, especially with the industry, as you mentioned, with operators wanting to change the loadout every year. Yeah. Uh, so that seems like that's moving up quicker uh, than anticipated. But you also spoke on a panel leading the digital revolution and what leadership means in the context of today's rapidly scaling digital infrastructure. Why don't you tell us a little bit more about some of the highlights from that panel and what were some of the key takeaways there? Well, the panel was very diverse. There was uh, interesting perspectives from uh, strategic advisory and from renewable energy so, uh, company and from myself as an uh, engineering and technologies. So um, we all brought different perspective to the discussion. And the, the, the obvious one is technical revolution, technical or digital transformation. It's affecting all of us. It's affecting the design we do, but it's also affecting our organizations. So this was one of the highlights. But I think important thing is that even if we keep up with um, innovating IT solutions and cooling solutions and uh, engineering solutions, we don't forget about people. Because at the end of the day, even if we think that AI will at some point replace like all design process, um, it's still people who are deploying it. Right. And I think the most important thing right now is to make sure artificial intelligence and human intelligence are talking to each other and they have, let's say, friends or we can marry them efficiently and make sure that it supports each other. Yeah, I mean, the connection between the people and the AI and our industry is critical to our growth, uh, especially as we continue to move so rapidly with AI and our industry as a whole, right? So one thing that you mentioned, like people are at the heart of our industry and they can't be left behind. I love that, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're talking about AI. Of course, we're talking about AI. We're always talking about AI. But AI is reshaping the way data centers are designed, 
you know, from digital twin and so on and so forth. Uh, how is Derns optimizing infrastructure to support AI workloads while maintaining the compliance and the sustainability standards? Uh, well, the first thing I mentioned is, is a modular solution. So this is almost must at the moment. Obviously, we are on top of things with cooling because we're very um, we're top specialist on the market for engineering of the mechanical system and cooling yeah. solutions. Um, these days, um, let's say old old fashioned saying location, location, location and yeah. commercial real estate still apply to data centers. And it's not a, a linear um, just be closer to the users because now AI comes in life right. in power and AI brings different um parameters into choosing the location you not necessarily have to be next to the right. next to the users also renewable energy and the transmission of renewable energy brings another perspective to to location because some operators prefer to be closer to uh, sources of renewable yes. energy so the location now the choosing of the site is very much a strategic decision right now which we as a company helps our clients with depends on their strategy depends on what the loads they're going to deploy in the data centers, wherever they have parallel processes, AI, or they're just doing cloud. So <clears throat> the location and selection of sites is super important. And what we do well at Derns as well, we're adopting digital tools very well, and we're developing our own digital tools that can help clients to make early decisions. Like, for example, recently we started deploying a um, tool that we designed ourselves, developed, uh, that uh, assess total cost of ownership, and it, it allows clients to see different options for liquid cooling and then the traditional cooling and then um, see total cost, capex cost, PEU, um, uh, and then they can decide where they go right. or where they want to be. Yeah. Are you seeing more operators move towards areas, of course, probably where there's like stranded power and, you know, like in the middle of North Dakota, for example, we know one big developer that just uh, signed a big deal there. But... Is that what you're seeing, a shift more towards stranded power, renewable power? I think, it, it, I think it's getting more diverse. Yeah. If in the past it was all about Flap D, and I spoke in the panel yeah. a couple of years about it, it was about London, Frankfurt, Amsterdam, right. and you must be there. Then now it's more diverse, definitely, and the different operators have different strategies, as I said, because it depends what they're doing in data centers. Within the center, yeah. Yeah, and then the power availability, wherever it's, if they consider nuclear or on-site generation or grid or renewable, become a strategic input into the decision. So the, the um, locations are getting diversified, definitely. There is the tier markets arising like Madrid mm -hmm. and Zurich and so on, but there are also remote locations arising right. as well because there are benefits from renewable energy point of view and many others. So it's very much a strategic choice for the for the, for the team that works on developing data centers. Right, and you're the one that can help them. Yes, absolutely. I lead projects. So although my, my team is engineering, I, I'm responsible for leading projects. And I, we normally lead projects in international context where teams from different countries come together. So my role is to make, uh, to make things happen, yes. And while we're on the topic of AI, what's another way the industry is evolving because of AI, in your opinion? Um, I think it's very important to acknowledge that our clients changing because of AI, because they have to deploy AI for for us to use as a users. But I think we also need to understand that AI and digital tools and whatever happening in, in digitization and, and, and um, will impact our services as well. So the um, everything that we do in the um, engineering process, a lot of things could be automated and optimized. And there are a lot of conversation about um, threat to the jobs because of AI, because everything that has rules or everything that could be repetitive could be now done by AI. And I think it's true for some of engineering processes as well. Um, so we're looking continuously at developing, together with engineers, developing new tools. We're bringing coders and programmers into the team so we can work on those tools to optimize design. But we still very much see that engineers um, will be still a problem solvers. They will still be creative. They still need to find solutions. Ye yes, it will shift. The value proposition and how we deliver impact will change. But I think AI will strengthen, strengthen that, definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely here to, to help us move the industry forward, for sure. 
Is there anything else you want to add and, and let viewers know where they can go if they want to learn more about your company? Yes, you can come to our website. It's www.dearance.com. Um, yeah, we are in all countries in Europe and uh, other countries, so do find us. Please do. It sounds like that you're changing the world of data center design. We're so happy to have you, Tatiana, here on JSA TV. And thank you, viewers, for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV from Data Cloud Global Congress in Cannes, France. Thank you. Happy networking.